In the Diocese of Little Rock, we, uh, we call this evening a taste of faith. It is not only an opportunity to, to fund the education of seminarians, but it is a visible moment of faith when we gather as members of the Catholic Church to state publicly by our presence and by our generosity that we, that we love the Lord and we love his church and that we are serious about the education of young men for the priesthood. Permit me to add a few things to the introduction given me this evening. I'm going to share with you a success story still unfolding that has less to do with me, but more about a Catholic community where I've been pastor for almost 15 years. I cannot take uh, credit for what you are about to hear and see, but I accepted the invitation to speak to you this evening because of these sobering numbers. And remember, when it comes to priestly or religious vocations, it's all about attuning our ears to the voice of God. Like Holy Trinity Seminary, the parish of Christ the King Little Rock is also about to celebrate its 50th anniversary. It's a community of 6,000 members with an elementary school, pre-K through eight, of about 650 students. 50% of our pastors have served on the faculty of Holy Trinity Seminary. Okay, so we've only had four pastors. But, <laughs> but, but up until 13 years ago, we told everybody who asked of this wonderful parish, what is the number of native vocations from your parish? Are you ready? 13 years ago, here's the number. Zero. Christ the King is one of the most vibrant parishes in our diocese with good and holy pastors before me, a host of deacons truly dedicated to their ministries, a well-developed faith formation program, a faculty of 50 lay teachers in our school, a full-time deacon who is hands down our best teacher of religion in the junior high. We are a tithing parish, we say of ourselves, going back more than 25 years. 10% of our offering goes to the poor and the needy in our community. Another quarter of a million dollars benefits our, our mission in Trujillo, Honduras. Over 100 of our parishioners go to Honduras each year on their own dime. By far, Christ the King has been the epitome of generous people, people just like you, except we had produced not one native vocation, not one. So in 2002, we formulated a plan. We called it our Pentecost vision to address the future needs of our parish. The first goal of our parish was to institute perpetual adoration. Perpetual adoration for us means just that, 24-7. We have over 450 adorers who take their hour, and some of them even take two. As a result, our parish has changed in 13 years. I believe our parish is a, is a holier parish 13 years later. One of the prayers we have developed as part of Eucharist adoration was a, a continued prayer for vocations, for priestly vocations, and vocations to consecrated life. No one could have predicted the results. We went from zero. And then to Father Andrew Hart, our first native son ordained to the priesthood. At our Taste of Faith dinner this, uh, this past August, I gathered together with me seminarians from our parish actively now studying for uh, priesthood in the diocese from our parish.
There are nine of them there. Most of these men received their academic formation at the University of Dallas. Most of them received their spiritual formation at Holy Trinity Seminary. It didn't end there. One of our teachers, Cliff Heyer, has entered the Benedictine community at Subiaco. Our first female graduate from the grade school has entered the religious life. Brother Jacob Weisenbaker is our first homeschooled parishioner who is in Second Philosophy in Detroit. It cannot be coincidence that 13 vocations have been produced at the same time as Eucharistic adoration began. But there's more. About these candidates for priesthood, religious life, there are other things they share in common. All of our nine seminarians who are studying for diocesan priesthood graduated from our Catholic school. They all graduated from Catholic high school for boys in Little Rock. All of our seminarians were actively involved in uh, Catholic youth ministry in our parish. 80% of our uh, seminarians are Eagle Scouts. At the same time we initiated perpetual adoration, our parish formed a vocations committee. This was an important group of people who has as their, their goal to foster the vocations, the priesthood, religious life, life at every turn. It was our way of attuning again our ears to the sound of God's voice reasons why our committee has been especially successful. One is Mary and Conrad. They've done an excellent job with leadership. But the other is one of the things that's happened in our parish is, is two words I would bring to people. One, we've become mindful. We've become mindful of what happens if we would lack a priest. If we didn't have a priest and we were not so be able to celebrate the Eucharist. I would add that one of the projects of the seemingly ubiquitous vocations committee has been the dissemination of the diocesan uh, uh, poster. I think a lot of dioceses have that poster. Our committee orders about, about 60 of these, uh, one for each of the classrooms in our school, our church, our offices, and so forth. And our children in the school, in our religious pro education program, or faith formation program, they pray for vocations. They pray for vocations every day. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. God our Father, please send us holy priests and religious. Bless and protect our discerners as they study for the priesthood and the religious life. In our, in our Adoration Chapel, our deacon takes the junior high students there once a week for uh, adoration. And, and in that chapel, they, they kneel and they, they pray. He, he leads them uh, in this prayer. Uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful moment to be able to walk into that chapel, to kneel with them, to see them uh, serious about what they're doing, but where they're doing it in the presence of the Most Blessed Sacrament. Our ch children, they, they frequent the chapel so much, they see these posters around the, uh, the uh, church uh, so much. Um, that they're known to, uh, to our students, um, they're known to our seminarians. Uh, our seminarians are household names. Just ask Joseph Friend. Hello, my name is Joe Friend, and I'm a senior here at Holy Trinity Seminary. Uh, but tonight I want to talk a little bit about my home. And my home is Christ the King Parish in Little Rock. I'd like to share with y'all two stories that really encompass the environment that they are creating there for vocations and the first of which happened in the school, at Christ the King School. And in the summers, uh, the seminarians would visit the different classrooms uh, to meet the students. And as we were in, sitting in the hallway waiting to go in the next classroom, there was a kindergarten class that was walking by, and the teacher stopped him and she said, Who are these guys? And the, the first student in line kind of mustered out. He goes, They're seminarians. Sim, 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 and she correctively, uh, supportively said, Yes, they're seminarians. And what do these guys do? 
And uh, the, the student who answered looked very perplexed, and he was kind of scratching his chin. And the, the second student line shot his hand up, and with true conviction said, they study to be priests. And he said it in a way to where it was almost like, come on, man, how would you not know that? They tell us this every day. And so obviously the students have a recognition of who the seminarians are, and um, they pray for us in their daily morning prayers. And this translates to what happens at the Mass. Uh, because one Sunday, I, I was going to Mass in the summer with my family, and I was le as I was leaving Mass, uh, I just felt a tug on the back of my shirt, and I, I turned around to this beautiful little face of the student of Christ the King, and she looked up at me and she said, You're Joe, and we pray for you. Your picture's in our room. You're a seminarian. And uh, she couldn't have been more than third grade. And it's, it's stories like these that I know that the seminarians from Christ the King especially hold in our hearts as we go into the seminary because we know our vocation is not only one of loving the people, uh, but we realize that the people really do love us, and we're very thankful for that. Thanks, Joe. Five years ago into our Pentecost vision, we instituted our uh, vocations chalice program. This is a familiar program throughout the country. But it's a wonderful experience as a pastor and a celebrant. At one of our masses each weekend, we have this vocation chalice, which we've had since uh, 2007. And we uh, invite a, a family each, each week to receive the chalice. Uh, they, they come out of the congregation, as you see, and uh, they approach the altar. And when they arrive there, then it's a, always a privilege to present that chalice uh, to uh, one of the family members. We ask them to place that chalice in a prominent place in their home. We give them a card which has a vocations prayer for priestly vocations and religious vocations. We ask them to take it home and to pray it and to pray for an increase of vocations to the priesthood and to religious life. It's a wonderful experience each week. The vocations chalice is, uh, is not new, and perhaps many of your parishes have something similar. But we, uh, we took it a step further in our school, and uh, for eight years now we have had our vocations chalice poster. This is a poster has an image of the, of the chalice on it, and uh, the pictures of all of our uh, parish seminarians and those who are in, in religious life. And it's brought in procession uh, at the beginning of the a weekly uh, children all school mass at the at the church at the school, and then at the end of uh, the the mass, uh, it's presented handed down from one class to another. So in the course of an academic year, each class has had that poster with those pictures of our of our seminarians and those in religious life uh, to pray for. And finally, we have instilled in our parish parishioners a courage to invite young men and women to pray about their own possible vocation to priesthood and consecrated life. We think this is an important thing, brothers and sisters, a very important thing, because we challenge our people to be bold about this, not to be embarrassed or ashamed or bashful, to encourage young people. Are you listening to the voice of the Lord? We want our young people to be attuned to the voice of the Lord. And very often that voice comes from parishioners who see in them what they just might be thinking about already. We need, of course, the Sura Club, the Knights of Columbus to help. We depend upon them for their support. We need parents to encourage their sons and daughters to listen to God's voice. But we have found that, that nowhere else, nowhere else than in the presence of the Blessed Sacrament does that voice sound so clear. If you have not begun perpetual adoration in your parish, do it now. Do it now. Our parish has changed. The numbers are there. The vocations are there. It's come from people sitting and kneeling before the Blessed Sacrament asking for that gift. Now, not so long ago, a few months ago, in fact, I was visiting with one of my sisters. I was telling her about being here with you tonight, and, and while I tried to give her an idea of what, was, what I was going to be speaking to you about, she picked up on the critical need to raise funds for Holy Trinity Seminary and for vocations 
And her comment was this. So basically, you're going into the shark tank. <laughs> now, honestly, I had no idea what she was talking about. But I can tell you that in the past three months, I have watched more episodes of Shark Tank than I can recount. <laughs> and I think I've got it down. And even though I realize that there is something else, someone else is supposed to be talking to you about, about the funding and so forth, I'd like to give this a little try. This is what I have learned from Shark Tank. I want to do this in the presence of the Blessed Sacrament, by the way, it's important. First of all, there are the sharks. They're the sharks, the ones who can, if they choose, to invest in whatever is being presented. There are those who have an idea, a concept, a product that they are hoping the sharks will invest. After the presentation is made, the sharks ask a lot of questions. And if satisfied with a product, either buy it into it or compliment the people at which everyone seems to be happy or they soberly, soberly pronounce, I'm out. Let's talk Shark Tank. <laughs> well, I never thought of the term shark in a positive light. Let's presume the posture this evening that among you are the sharks who are ready to invest in the product placed before you. I know that many of you have already come here with a figure in mind. Some of you have already contributed but I would respectfully ask that you tear that up and listen for the deal of a lifetime. <laughs> the shark asks, what's the product? The response, vocations. Vocations to the priesthood. Vocations to the priesthood at Holy Trinity Seminary. Here are some of them. The shark asks, what do they do? Response, they go to the University of Dallas for the finest of education, but they go to Holy Trinity Seminary to become holy men of God prepared for a life of service to you. The shark asks, what are you asking? We're asking for $350,000. That's a lot of money. The shark asks, I always like this question, What's my equity? The response, it's 100%. You get it all. The shark asks, I'm not so sure. What do I get? That's what you get. 100% equity. Every dollar you invest, you get back a dollar and then some. I love this question. The shark asks, yeah, but has it been tried on the market yet? <laughs> the response is yes, absolutely. And here are some examples. I want to get some of these wrong. But would you please stand? Bishop Desitel, would you please stand? Monsignor Don Zimmerman, would you please stand? Father Tom Cloherty, would you stand? Father Bruce Bradley, if you're here, would you stand? Monsignor Larry Bouchard, Father Steve Beershank, uh, my good friend Father John Labone, Father David Flory, Monsignor Curver, if you're here, would you please stand? Monsignor Greg Kelly, Father Robert Williams, Father Trun, they're all over. And I know, I know that I've missed, I've missed some alums from Holy Trinity. If you are an alum from Holy Trinity, would you please stand? I'm going to recognize all of you. Please stand. Yes. And if that's not enough with all of our priests, please stand. This is what you get. So the final question remains, 
are you in? Thank you for your time.